Hello, everybody. Thank you ever so much for taking time out to join us today on our webinar around NUIX and MSAB. Um, first of all, before I start, I guess, I guess thank you just for taking time out. Obviously, there's a lot going on in the world at the moment, and hopefully this, this session will spend a, a little bit, will be informative and give you some insights what we're trying to do between our two technologies, and will hopefully be useful um, for you and your business. So the, the topic really today is around the positive news really that we've announced into the press in the last week or so around how NUIX and MSAB are working together to integrate their technologies together. So we've got a really interesting session for you today. I hope that the slides will move as I push the button. One second. Excellent. So today's agenda. Hopefully the slides are going to move. Just wait on a second while I get the slides to move. Looks like I'm going to have to do it a different way. Okay. Sorry, just have a little bit of technical difficulty getting the slides to move. There we go. So today's agenda. So first of all, I'm going to introduce who's on the line, who we've got talking to you today. Then we're going to spend a little bit of time um, for the users of NewX, a little bit of an introduction to MSAB. I'm going to flip that round for the MSAB users on the call, a little bit of an introduction to NUIX. And we're going to look at some of the industry drivers for why we've uh, created an integration. Then we're going to hand over to my colleague Tom, who's going to talk us through how the integration works and do a bit of a technical demo. And then at the end of the session, we will have time for Q&A. So my name is Paul Slater. I'm um, the government director at NUIX here. I've been working for NUIX around about six years now. My background is pretty much law enforcement, government and corporate investigations, spent 20 odd years working in and around digital forensics. Uh, my key role at NUIX is, is twofold really. I spend a lot of my time working uh, with our, our customers across government, law enforcement and corporate. And really I also sit quite closely to our product and technology. And part of my role is around looking at what our customers and what the market need um, and what the market wants from a technology and helping to define and build some of that into our, into our product stack. So part of the real, I guess, the rationale for what we've done and the reason we're on this call today is to provide you, our, our, our customers and our prospective customers, with how this integration is going to work with you and how that, this integration is going to hopefully make your life a little bit easier. So joining me on the call today... I'm really, really pleased to introduce to you uh, Mike Dickinson. Uh, Mike is the Deputy CEO for um, MSAB. Uh, Mike really is quite an instrumental for uh, you know, helping to shape how MSAB have embraced uh, our request to build this technology and put this technology forward. So Mike, I'm going to hopefully move the slide on um, a little bit about yourself and then hopefully you can tell us about MSAB and what's new with you guys. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Paul. Appreciate that. I can see uh, over 200 people on the webinar call as we're speaking, so that's excellent. Thank you very much. Um, as Paul said, my name is Mike Dickinson. I'm the Deputy Executive at MSAB, uh, Microsystem Mission Mobile Forensics. Uh, my background, just very briefly, um, I spent half my life working in frontline policing and the services, and the other half uh, presenting and helping with technology to support law enforcement. And for the last uh, 11 years, I've been with MSAB. Um, just a quick introduction to the company, and we'll start with that background. So uh, what we're about these days is something we like to call frontline forensics. Um, when I first joined the company a while ago, we were pleased if a specialist at a central lab was using our technology. But these days, the demand for digital extraction of mobile phones is so huge that we need to roll out effectively industrialization of mobile forensics. And the graphics you're seeing here show that. So we've gone from an expert who used to work in the central lab to a demand for pretty much every serving law enforcement officer who encounters crime investigation to need to seize phones. So we have to roll technology out to the front line to help them. Um, if we do that, that makes it massively more scalable so they can deal with the huge uh, increase in the number of phones being seized and examined because they're so valuable for forensic evidence. But also it means the complexity has to be lowered. So we've got to make those user interfaces really simple, really easy to use, almost bulletproof. And that's what our solutions try to do. The idea being, as you can see with the sort of 
triangle there that 80% of the devices that are encountered by uh, frontline staff can be dealt with right at the beginning, quickly and efficiently. For the smaller crimes, lesser crimes that can be dealt with. And the more difficult phones, the more serious crimes can be still passed up to the center. So those central lab teams uh, can use their expertise where they're needed most on the most complex crimes and the most complex devices to get into and accessible. So this is an industrialization of mobile forensics. We've gone beyond the expert, and we're now trying to roll these solutions out. Next slide, please, Paul. Thanks, Mike. So we're moving on to what is XRY. This is a mobile forensic extraction platform, uh, and it's encapsulated with three core benefits to it. We supply a solution that captures all the mobile forensic data in a unique file format, a proprietary format called XRY. And we do that for a number of reasons. We can uh, compress the file quite considerably. So typically you can take a uh, 60, 128 gigabyte file and lower that compression and file size to help with storage. We're also very, very fast because we pre-index the XLY file. So as soon as you open up that file, you'll be displayed with all the evidence within a couple of seconds. We don't have to re-index every time the device extraction is open to review. And finally, we're very, very good at decoding and providing security wrapped around that. Next slide, please. So this is the XRY file format. Uh, and it's contained with a series of bullets. First of all, we hash and encrypt the data. It's uh, synchronized for time harmonization. And what we mean by that is we've learned from years that the timestamps on phones are, are, are very different. So you can get one, two, three, and that could be the 1st of February 2003. But equally, that could also be the 3rd of February 2001, depending on which way the device timestamps. So we've gone through every device and make sure it's harmonized so that you can compare like with like. Uh, there is a full transparent audit log built in within every XRY file, so you can see what's happened. And most importantly, uh, an independent expert for the defense could follow that process and get the same results. As I said before, it's pre-indexed for opening faster. It provides a secure chain of evidence, chain of custody, so that there's no way that data can be interfered with. And it also offers a degree of data protection, GDPR. We can create subsets of this master copy so that we only uh, distribute the data to those who need it, and you can remove any confidential or exclusive data. Next. Uh, this is an example of a screenshot. Uh, I'm pleased to announce that today, uh, just about an hour or so ago, we launched our latest version of XRY. This is version 9.0. And I don't know if you, how well you can see the screen, but we we're able to achieve some extremely high speeds using the latest USB 3 drivers on the latest USB 3-enabled uh, smartphones. So uh, it's got uh, over 1.1 gigabits per second as an extraction speed as a possibility. Now, it does vary on devices, but that's just to give you an idea of the speed that we can now achieve extraction. Next. Uh, another benefit of XRY in comparison to our competitors, we allow with one single license the ability to do three simultaneous phone extractions. The visualization here is just showing you the benefit that will bring. If you had three smartphones and you need to extract that data with just one license key on one computer, you can plug in three different phones on three different USB ports and safely and carefully and quickly extract all of those simultaneously. Uh, so the average time saved there is a tremendous benefit in terms of view. It. And, and similarly, in terms of opening all the files and reviewing them can be done super fast because of the pre-indexation. Next. Now, naturally, we like to say that we've got an excellent tool, and it does good work. But it's always better when an actual real-life customer tells us this. And this is an example of a screenshot of some comparison testing that we didn't do. Uh, one of our customers did last year and kindly sent it over to us. But it gives you a good example of their comparison of uh, six phones here that they did extractions from and compared it with a leading competitor. And you can see we have done a particularly good job in terms of decoding pictures, uh, so video. So that's just an example of where we think we have the advantage. Now, every phone is different, and every tool has different. And we're, we're not saying you should only have our one tool, but we do want to say give us a chance, because you'll be very impressed, hopefully, if you were to do a side-by-side -side comparison with, say, 10 phones. I think you'll find that XRY is capable of getting you a lot more data and certainly decoding it. Next.
And to summarize, this is all concluded in what we call the ecosystem of mobile forensics. So this diagram here is a visualization overview of everything we can offer within MSAB, just to give you a taste and a flavor for what's capable. So we started initially with XRY extraction tools, uh, but uh, we also have a series of products for the analysis uh, examine, and we have some management suite tools as well in the exec range. And you can see we partner with uh, other companies to help us do vehicle forensics with uh, vehicles like Berla, and we also do drone forensics and plenty of other Internet of Things. What I will say is we're specialists in what we do. Uh, we do extremely well, and we give you products to provide that. But of course, most criminal investigations, most investigations uh, from any sort will gather data from other sources, and that's the point where we need to hand it over. So within the mobile forensics domain, we're really, really good but we have many, many customers who ask us and work with other partners, and Nuix is one of those, and they've said we want closer integration so we can bring in other types of data, be it CCTV, computer forensics, or whatever. So we've worked towards an, a great partnership with Nuix, and I'm delighted to say that this is a result today. Uh, so I'm going to hand back, I think, to Paul at this stage. Thanks, Mike, and uh, congratulations on uh, on the release. That's uh... Impressive news as well. So I know there's a lot of new stuff in there that you are, you are obviously customers are looking forward to. So well done on the release. Thank you. So for all those customers on the line who perhaps are thinking, well, who are Newix and what is it that they do? So as, as Mike's kind of sort of talked about really, MSAB, the background and the heritage is all around, you know, the mobile device and, you know, they've invested many, many years in, building out their technology and their capabilities to to handle all types of mobile devices, you know, whether that be the simple throwaway burner type phone all the way through to the latest and greatest smartphones that many of us have. And you know, many people involved in, in investigations will, will understand as you know as the world has changed, a relationship with technology has changed too. And you know, here at Newix we've been around since about two thousand and one of our key drivers as a technology is, is our stack and our engine. And really what Nuix allows us to do, or allows you to do, is to effectively look at data at enormous scale. And that scale can be anything from you know, looking across an enterprise or looking across a huge investigation. But interestingly, and a lot of people think that Nuix is a technology that sits at the top end of, of the investigation um, and technology platform, but actually a lot of our customers are using this on smaller investigations. And, and I think the, the language of size is interesting really because, you know, and we've got a slide coming up in a little bit where, you know, even within one device you can have an enormous amount of information now. You know, I'm kind of showing my age a little bit, but you know, when I first started in forensics we were, we were seizing hard drives where, you know, they were, they were, they were classed as big because they were, they, they were measured in meg. Now, nowadays, we, we, we have devices in our pockets which hold terabytes of information. So it's interesting that when we talk about the volume, volume really is a, is a comparative measure. So what is it that Nuix does? Well, we allow our users to effectively take data, human-generated data, machine-generated data. We support literally thousands of different file formats from common office formats through to forensic containers all the way through to weird and wonderful things that maybe you've never come across or you know they were, they were, they were, they were useful 20 odd years ago but maybe they're still sitting in an old archive system somewhere. And we also bring that and allow people to look at both historical and real-time data. And really the, the whole point of our technology is to allow users to ask questions of that data, to make connections, to see you know, the people, the objects, locations, events that live within a piece of data to build intelligence, understand what's going on with that, within that data, and actually, in some instances, to start thinking about understanding behavior and how behavior can be used as a, as a, as a tool as part of an investigation. Essentially, we allow you to pinpoint the critical data that you need as part of an investigation. So as Mike's kind of touched on, really, Nuix supports and ingests multiple file types, and Obviously, you know, the reason that we're both on this call together is a lot of our customers have told us that you know, the use of mobile and not just mobile in your pocket, but again, as Mike has touched on, you know, data coming from drones, coming from vehicles, all, all those kind of different sources. Now it allows you to take all those sources and effectively combine them with traditional sources such as email, 
social media, enterprise data, through to weird and wonderful things like airline stub and, and you know, door access logs, and become a single repository for all of that information. And NUIX effectively allows all that data to be loaded into a case and provides a single platform for collaboration and intelligence. And one of the key drivers of what our technology has built out is to effectively give our different users different lenses into the same, into the same data. So as you can see on the screen now, it may well be as part of an investigation you have the person top left who wants to see a very high-level dashboard-driven view of a data set. You know, they want to look at the, the, the geolocational information that's being recovered from mobile devices, for example. They want to see you know, the, the contacts, how people are connecting together. They want to get a high-level view of the types of documents, the types of data they've got within their case, for example. Maybe they want to look at an investigation and focus down on a time range. Maybe they want to look at the, the entities that have been extracted. So, for example, to see that within your data set at the beginning of your investigation, you've got lots of uh, references to phone numbers or email addresses or IP addresses or whatever. That can help you drive your investigation strategy. Maybe in the left-hand corner, you want uh, a very traditional deep dive forensic view looking at binary ones and zeros. We allow that to happen as well at the same time. Maybe top right, you're a, a DMI, a, a digital media investigator, and you want to look at the data and see you know, the images. You want to see how images are classified. Maybe you want to use part of the technology stack, which allows you to automatically classify images based on their content. So I'll see the, the pictures of the guns, money, drugs, or whatever it may well be. Or maybe actually you're, this, you're the chap in the bottom right and you want to look at a very kind of uh, lightweight document level view. You know, you want to see a Word document like a Word document so you can review and make a determination. You want to see the items that are relevant to you as part of your case. And NUIX essentially allows all of these different data sources to be brought together and allows the different views to be presented to the different people within an investigation. And why do we do that? Well, we, we do that really to help you understand the five WH investigation questions. You know, the classic, who is it about? What happened? When did it take place? Where did it take place? Why did it happen? And, you know, if you're trying to do some provenance in how did it happen as well? And all of our customers tell us around, you know, this, this effect of this circle of the goals they're trying to achieve, particularly with mobile devices, is around attribution. So can we, can we attribute this device to this person? Can we look at things like association? You know, how do these people involved in my case? How do they interact with each other? Can we see how they're connected to association? Can we use the geolocational information that MSAB will help us to recover and analyze to look at location, whether that be location from a geolocational uh, picture on a camera, or whether that be locational data taken from a vehicle, maybe as part of uh, uh, the, the in-car system, recording where the vehicle was, the, the trajectory, the telemetry. Looking at time, you know, can we put these events together at a particular time, a particular location, and can we look at the content, and can we start to see you know, what are the topics and themes that people are talking about? And interestingly as well, can we also see some of the anomalies? So again, particularly maybe in a, in a, in a cyber investigation, you want to see some of the outliers as well. And NUIX really allows you to bring all of that data together. So what was one of the drivers for our, our integration? Well, as, a, you know, as we've sort of touched on on this call really already, and I'm going to ask Mike as well to feel free to input to this slide. A lot of the drivers for the integration when we speak to our, our customers, a lot of our customers are telling us that you know, the budgets are restricted, resources are limited, and time is against them. And, and they see a rise in the volume of submissions, the number of devices coming into a particular unit, the complexity of the devices and the data, and I'm sure Mike will touch on that, you know, some of the complexities of some of the latest apps that are out there, the varying sources of, in, of evidence we need to look at, you know, the lack of standardization, there's often pressure through, you know, through public scrutiny around the need to get investigations done in a timely manner. 
And there's obviously things to consider around disclosure requirements. And really, you know, a lot of a lot of the, the drivers for that, there's more effort required per case. You know, we, we, we see that backlogs are increasing. We see that there are stretched and inefficient resources out there. Often we're in, within a digital forensics world or an e-discovery world, there's a very siloed approach whereby different teams are working on different parts of the evidence and not necessarily collaborating and talking to each other. And if we take a very device level view, we're not necessarily going to see the bigger picture. And often, you know, that's really important when you're trying to understand all of the events that have happened. Mike, a slide maybe you want to touch and talk to. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Uh, this is a, a worthwhile slide to take a look at because the screenshot you can see here on the laptop is a real-life screenshot that a customer sent us of our examined software. Um, if you look into the yellow zone, and specifically to uh, the category of pictures, you'll see here that there was 1.45 million pictures. And if we move over to the uh, right-hand side with the sort of turquoise messages panel in the chat, you'll see there's 1.5 million. This was one phone. Uh, wow. And I just want to sort of use this to, to reiterate the emphasis of what's going on out there in, in the real world. Some of these smartphones are containing, containing just a tremendous volume of data. And this one phone had over one and a half million chat messages and just close to 1.4 million pictures. That's almost impossible for any one examiner to be able to make sense of or review real time. And so you need smart tools to do it. We're, we're trapped between a tsunami of mobile data, as you see here, and pictures and images and chat messages and, and location are incredibly valuable. But customers want it as fast as they possibly can while simultaneously phones are getting more and more data on and it's taking longer and longer to extract. So there's always a balance to be struck between triaging the device to get you access to the data quickly, but at the same time giving you the real rich data that will help the investigation. So this is a dilemma we're stuck with, and that's why good quality analysis tools like Nuance can really, really help you make sense of the bigger picture. And I believe, Mike, you're actually holding a competition, aren't you, amongst your customers to see which which ones can that's give right. you... Give yes, you I will, even uh, more data, yeah? I will express courier a tin of Swedish Fika cookies to anybody <laughs> in the world who can send me a screenshot with more data on a mobile phone than this one, because uh, yeah, it's good fun. With, without cheating, obviously. Yeah, yeah, that, it's got to be real. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. So with that as a, as a backdrop, what we, what we sort of set about as part of our integration is how can we make it easier for users of our technologies to effectively get more from each of those tools and essentially trying to take the old the old metric of two and two equals five here. So what we've decided to do, and we, you know, the releases are now are now live and we will show you how the releases look in, in a moment. I'll hand over to my colleagues to actually walk you through a little bit of a demo. Is when we spoke to customers, we 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 found there was a number of things that they were they were always doing and we we didn't make it easy for them or we could have made it easy for them. So it was it was quite a number of button pushes to get data out of MSAB in, in a new it's friendly format. And there's a few button pushes to get data into new it's from MSAB and then how to get that data processed. So we decided that we would we would try and streamline the process as best as possible. And what we've tried to do in this integration or the first phase of this integration is to streamline how data comes out of MSAB, reduce the number of button pushes that a user has to go through. And of course, by reducing the number of button pushes, you're going to reduce the number of, of steps for error that could occur on the way. We've also improve the performance of how Nuix handles data coming in from MSAB. Um, I'll, I'll let my colleague explain that in a moment, but we've created a new processing profile, particularly aimed at mobile data. And we've actually made it even easier with a, with a button now to actually bring in data from MSAB. We've, we've also built a, a brand new file format. Well, actually, MSAB kindly have built a brand new file format for us which ensures that when data is exported from MSAB, it is done in such a way that it contains only the files that we need. So no longer are we going to create lots of different files that you need to work out which ones are the ones that we need. A brand new file extension and a brand new container format 
will now contain all of the data that we need. And to allow users to move seemingly frictionless between the two technologies, one of the key, the key aspects of this integration is any investigator tags or any work product that a user would do within Examine, which is obviously MSAB's um, analysis platform, any of those user-created tags are now automatically imported into Nuix. And that allows the investigator to effectively pick up where he left off or where they left off when they move between the two technologies. So how does integration work? Well, pretty much the easy button, really. We're allowing users to move frictionlessly between products. That's, that's our aim. When we first sat down and started talking to each other about this, that was the, the goal in mind, the end in mind that we had. How can we make the experience for our, our collective users as simple and as frictionless as possible? And if we just take a little bit of a view of what that used to look like, up until the new releases, the workflow was quite convoluted. A user had to use, um, you know, looking at the mobile device, they had to use MSAB's technology to take an X or Y logical or physical image of the device. They had to load that into Examine, set some configurations up, you know, choose a number of different options and set some different things in motion to get an output. And that output created an XML file or an extended XML file, which then was zipped up a number of different steps, quite a convoluted workflow. The other side of that was, of course, that the new issues they had to work out which file he needed or they needed, point new issues to the, the relevant file. We exported, extracted out the XML file. They then had to set a number of configuration options up as to how that data was to be processed. And then the data would be processed and would be pushed to the reviewer. Quite a number of steps, as you can see. Our aim was to simplify that as, as, much, as much as possible to the point where the, the steps within MSAB are now quite simple. Load the data in, do the analysis if you want to do the analysis, comment and tag, do all your work products. And then when you're ready to push that data into Nuix, simply push the button. This new file format is created. This new file is exported. Nuix understands what this new file is. Simply point Nuix to the new file and we're off, and it's as simple as that. So, Mike, just your screen, if you just want to quickly just tell us about your screen there and how that looks and how it works. Certainly. Uh, this is a screenshot of the export function within Examine, our analysis package. So Examine yeah. version 5 has been launched today and is available to download from our customer portal. So if you go there and download Examine as a current user, you'll be able to see this new option in the export options. And the beauty of it really is it's as simple as we could possibly make it. So there's the icon highlighted for Nuix. You simply click Next, and everything is done for you, pre-selected, so you don't have to configure any tweak, any buttons, or ask train users to uh, tick any particular boxes. It will then create an MSAB Nuix container file, and you will point that to the directory where you want Nuix to hoover up the information and import it into their system. Excellent. It couldn't be simpler. And the, and the converse of that is for our users, Nuix, users of Nuix Workstation, we, we, we have now a mobile evidence button. And by selecting that at the point of data ingestion, you now see a new MSME option. By clicking that, it will point you to the new, the new file. Click the new file. Select the new processing profile. And it's, it is as simple as that. I mean, in all honesty, Mike, Two slides, you know, is everything that we want to talk about, really. We tried to make it as simple as we possibly can for our users. Yeah, exactly. It's about streamlining the workflow, making it as easy the transition. Um, I'm Thank sure you. Tom will be able to show it better than we can. Well, hopefully this is where, this is where the technology all starts to go, to go wrong. So I'm going to now hand over to my colleague, Tom Anderson. Uh, Tom is in quite a unique position, really, because Tom has been at Nuix for a number of years, and he, he works as part of our um, innovation team, of helping to uh, essentially look at you know, how we innovate within our technology. And Tom's main focus has been, for a number of years, looking at Nuix's um, ability to ingest and support mobile devices. And the reason Tom's really, really good at it is because Tom's background is that Tom used to be at MSAB. So Tom does actually have, effectively, had a foot in both camps, really. So Tom is the right person to, to lead this um, integration. So Tom, hopefully you've taken control now. 
yeah, hopefully you can see my screen. Um, should just show examine right now. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Paul, as well. Um, as, as Paul said, I'm uh, Tom Anderson. I'm a product innovation at Nuix. Uh, I've got quite a few years of experience within mobile and MSAB, so uh, probably am the right guy for the job. Uh, unfortunately, the job I've got today is a live demo. So uh, <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully that goes well. Um, it should be a nice and simple process. Uh, there's only a, a few things that could go wrong, so uh, bear with me if there are any problems, but I'm sure it'll be absolutely fine. Um, okay, so this is the latest version of Examine that, um, as Mike said, was released today. Um, I've had a little bit of a play about with it um, and just, just testing it uh, going out to Nuix and everything is, is good so far. Um, so I'm going to try and show you an end-to-end -end, um, demo, really, with a few kind of steps skipped out because obviously... Uh, uh, it's not very fun watching progress files and, and things like that go along. So at the moment, I've, I've read three mobile phones in with XRY. Um, done the extraction on those. I've then um, also used the cloud extraction uh, functionality uh, to extract some more data from those devices. So I've got quite a, a nice amount of data in this case. Um, I'm just going to highlight one thing before I move to the export, and that's the tagged items. So I've also gone through my case uh, within Examine and just uh, applied a bunch of tags to, to the information as I, as I go through. I just wanted to highlight that because that is something that will follow you through into Nuix now as well. So uh, there are other things that we want to work on, which I'll touch on a, a bit later. Uh, but that's uh, in the initial release. We wanted to make sure you at least have the ability to move your tags over from examine into Nuix. So I'll just go up to the export option now. Um, and previously, um, to create a new export, you would have to select the extended XML button and the file button, and then uh, make sure the configuration for each of those is correct before exporting out to Nuix. Um, and as mentioned before, there was a few different checkboxes and options, and uh, we did find that users um, maybe misconfigured that, and then Nuix didn't correctly understand the file. So we've been working with MSAB. We've come up with the ideal export um, package now um, with zero configuration needed by the user. So you just literally just click next. There's no options to do on that. Um, and then you, all you need to do then is just uh, apply a name to the export file and, and specify the location, and that's it. Again, I'm not gonna actually do it now. I've prepared one earlier. So if I just open up this file here, this is what you would see on disk when your export's completed. Um, you just got the new .msob Nuix file. It's a nice seven gig file there. Um, and then the other file is just a log file, which uh, MSAB produce as part of the export, uh, just to highlight any, uh, any file name changes, issues, things like that. So now I'll jump into Nuix. Um, I've got a couple open here. Um, I've already created a case. It's, a, it's an empty, new, simple case. Um, I'll just go into the add evidence. I can go down here, and uh, as you saw on the screenshot, we've now got this new add mobile evidence button. So I'll just click on that. Um, it's already in the, in the location, I guess, because I, I found that earlier. But um, this is going to filter down to just MSAB Nuix files and .zip files. And actually, what happens in the background when you load this up, it actually uh, inspects any zip files that are there, just to ensure that they're valid MSAB zip files. So uh, for those that are not aware, the previous export was a zip. And that was the only way we ex uh, that, that was the format that we would expect for a, a, an MSAB export. So we still support that old format in this way, um, but obviously going forward, it's preferable if you use the new format. Um, so I just click on that, uh, open that up. It's identified it as an MSAB, Nuix, uh, MSAB uh, mobile evidence file at the top here. Um, I can just apply a name to this, um, and then I'll just click continue on that. And then the other thing that Paul touched on uh, briefly was the processing profile. So. Um, as standard, uh, Nuix ships with a default processing profile. We now also ship with a default uh, mobile processing profile. Uh, and the reason for this is um, if, you, if you process mobile data uh, from, uh, from another mobile tool, uh, like MSOB or Oxygen, um, the, uh, the, the default settings uh, will go too deep, really, on the data. The hard work, the analysis has already been done by the mobile phone tool. Um, what Nuix is really doing is it's, it's ingesting the data from the, the report that's been created, so the decoded data already exists. Um, and then if you tell it to, it's going to go and look at all the extra files and, and really go deep into that and 
potentially duplicate data and things like that. So by creating the uh, Bigfoot mobile processing profile, we've removed some of that additional processing that's not really necessary for, for this type of uh, data. So with any default processing profile, I always encourage you to go in and have a look. Uh, these are the default settings in that now, but they're not always applicable to every use case. Um, we've kind of uh, aggregated uh, what uh, a group of our users would like to see and, and set those as default, but obviously it's not always going to be the same. So for example here, uh, generate thumbnails. We're generating the workstation size 200 pixel thumbnail. If you're going to work and investigate, you probably want to change that to the larger 350 pixel size. Um, detecting faces, skin tone analysis, these kind of options are very useful in an investigation. So if you're not using it, it's going to just add processing time. So you probably want to disable those and save up a copy for yourself. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into the, the settings that have been set here. Um, I'm happy to talk offline with anyone about this. Just want to highlight one thing that I get questioned on quite often, which is the, uh, the chat messages, chat conversations. People ask why I've disabled those from, from here. And the, the basic answer is um, when we decode a message from um, a mobile tool, they come through as just chat messages. And they have the application assigned to them, but the MIME type within Nuix is just chat message. When you see a Google Android SMS message, for example, that is a message that we've decoded directly from the database itself. So if, if this read um, from MSAB had uh, decoded chat messages and it contained the SMS database, you would get two copies of every message because Nuix would decode it and MSAB have already decoded it. So that's kind of the reasoning behind that. There's a lot of other system files and things that have also been disabled. Again, feel free to, to look through this and, and customize it to your needs, um, but it's quite a good set to start with. Okay, I'm gonna just cancel out of that because again, no one wants to see some data processing and then hopefully I've got my other case here. Uh, this is just a quick demo case that I've set up. Um, at the bottom here, we've got our mobile data, our um, MSAB file, Nuix file. Uh, we've also got a couple of computers in here, um, a PST file with a bunch of emails, some Instagram uh, data, Facebook subpoena records, um, and some Google takeout records as well. Um, just really to highlight the fact that, that Paul mentioned earlier, um, obviously uh, tools like MSAB are, are excellent with their mobiles and, and far better than Nuix can ever be. Um, with mobile phones, but if you want to look at all of your data across your case, uh, Nuix is quite a very good tool to aggregate that because we can take in a lot of different sources of information. So this is just a few of the different types, but there's a, obviously a whole lot of other information we can take in. Um, I'm just going to go down here, just highlight what I mentioned earlier, which is the tagged items. So maybe you remember the tags that I had set, but these are the, the ones that were set in, uh, in MSAB and Examine. So these now have come across as Nuix tags. Um, if I wanted to look at um, anything else, uh, those tags are available for me, so I can now go in um, and apply those same tags that were imported from MSAB, and I can apply those onto other items as well. They're all available to me. Of course, I can still add new tags in here as well if I want to, um, but it's just another way of continuing your work from one product into another series. So I can just do that there, and that gets applied. Um, I'm not going to do too much with demo in here because, uh, again, it's, that's not the, the purpose of this talk, but I just want to show a couple of items. Um, if I go in, I can just show the map view. Again, with the, all these uh, location coordinates, there's, there's not a great deal in here, but these all come from uh, the MSAB data, so we've taken the location data and, and brought that into Nuix. Um, and another thing I like to highlight is the addresses um, view by option. Um, and what this does, especially at kind of a high level, it just shows you a list of all of the different domains that are available within your communication types. So we can see here we've got WhatsApp data. We can expand those out and see the addresses. Um, emails, we've got some Nuix emails in there, obviously it's Nuix data. Uh, some Facebook data. These are phone numbers with the prefix of, of plus four four. Um, it's just a nice way, again, of just uh, kind of getting that high overview of what you've got in your, in your data. Okay. Um, and then finally, I'm just going to quickly jump over to investigate, which is hopefully, oh no, sign me out, there we go. Oh, no, okay, I'm still in there. So I've got the same case open now in investigate. Um, again, I'm not going to do a big walkthrough or anything like that. I just want to highlight a couple of things that I feel are useful um, when you're doing mobile investigations. So we have our standard kinds um, and, and tags also here as well. Again, 
the tags have come through from MSAB into this point. Um, I can filter down on, on uh, these items here if I want to, so I can just click on chat conversations and I'm going to get to see the chat conversations here. Um, one thing that we are working on and, and something I've, I've been doing quite a lot of work in um, is our search filters, which are like intelligent search filters. So I've had uh, one that I've created called general and then a, a mobile searches as well. I'll just quickly show the mobile searches. Um, if I go down to that and I can see here I've got just some generic kind of mobile related uh, searches that I've built out. So if I just uh, reset that out, um, I can look at my device information. So I'm going to see all the devices that are, um, within my case. Um, and I can just see some basic information there with a, uh, a smartly applied metadata profile. So I can see IMEI, ZIMZ, things like that. Um, I've also got my chat conversations. Um, and again, I can just see um, more relevant data to that uh, based on just what I've set up on the, on the back end there. Um, I'll just show you quickly as, as this is open the other interesting new feature, uh, which is our conversations view. I know a lot of tools have this, uh, but this was added back into um, MSO, uh, sorry, MSOB, into Investigate uh, a few versions back. So it's, it's something we're working on, it's something we're always improving, um, but just so you're aware that there is a conversation view there for the chats. Finally, I'm, I'm, again, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but I just want to highlight our Investigate connections. Um, this is um, a way of looking at all your communications in, in your case uh, collectively. So this is um, all the conversations, not just going to be from mobile data, but from any other apps. Uh, if you've got Skype data, things like that on, on a computer, it's going to bring all that into this uh, one search here. So I can do investigate connections, um, and that's just going to show me how everything's linked. Uh, something that was added in a couple of versions back is also our people management, so I can for example, this is a, a, a local device. I know this is the, the phone um, that a lot of the data has come from. I can create a person to make that slightly more friendly to look at on the canvas there. So I just uh, use my own name, uh, hit create person, and now that's going to be identified as Tom. And I can, as I work through my investigation, I can add more accounts to this uh, Tom person or create new people. And it's just going to simplify that kind of investigation view there. Okay, um, I know I appreciate it's a very quick demo, but hopefully that's, that's helped. Um, wasn't any technical difficulties, I don't think. So um, I'll hand back over to Paul now for the, the rest of the talk. Thank you very much, Tom. I'm just going to reshow my screen now and we can continue. So really, really useful, Tom. Thank you for showing us that. We do have a few questions that popped up as well. I, I, I will make sure we take those questions at the end. So if you, if you have asked a question, thank you very much. And Please be assured we will, we will answer it when we get to the end of the, of the session, which we are fast approaching, by the way. So just to summarize pretty much what you've seen, really, um, there's two sides to this. The first side is, and uh, again, thank you, MSDB, for your support in all of this, is to enable NUIX to effectively understand your data better. And Mike, I don't know if you just want to summarize, um, if, you still, if, you, if you still know, just the three, the three points on the screen for us. Yeah, uh, quite simply, now you've got this optional export option. Uh, you can just select the identities you want. It'll create the new X, MSCB new X unique file tag. Uh, one of the key takeaways, I think, from this improvement is not only is it streamlined in terms of transition to new X, but also now any uh, notes, the tags you mark on and examine uh, on particular artifacts will now be transported over into new X and ingested as well. Thanks, Mike. And the other side of that, of course, as Tom's uh, demonstrated also, is, is the simplified workflow from our side. So we, we, we still continue to support the original um, exports from MSAB, which, is, as Tom said, was originally a .zip file. But now, even simpler, you can point Nuix directly to the new MSAB Nuix file, and we will process and understand that. We have, as we've said, now added in the support for any user-created tags in order to allow an investigator to you know, move between the two technologies as easily as possible. We've, we've added in a, a brand new mobile, mobile friendly, I, I guess, Tom, um, processing profile to ensure that the data that you load in from mobile devices is processed as it needs to be. And we don't go too deep in respect to some of the processing settings. I think my internet might have just dropped out, so hopefully you can still hear me. Hopefully you can still see my screen as well. Mike, can you still see my screen? Yeah, we can hear you, but unfortunately your screen share has dropped out, so we can't see that at the moment. I don't know if 
Hold on a second, I'm back, I think. Am I back? Just hold on a second, I'll try again. The joys of technology and the joys of working from home and technology. Also, it's back. Excellent. Yeah, we're back. back. So, as I said, we have this new processing profile. And, and I think what's really valuable as well, Mike, is that as part of our, our partnership is we now get access to your, your schema um, in, in, good, in good time. So any, any additions to, that you make, any, any extra things you put into your output, we, we get a, a good heads up on that. And we can actually ensure that when we bring our next version out that we're supporting your, your latest and greatest uh, output. Yeah, exactly. When we uh, deal with specialist partners, we'll always try and give you a heads up uh, about two to three weeks beforehand of what the new XML, extended XML schemas are, so you're prepared for it. Yep. Excellent. Thank you for that. So just in a closing minutes, really, we just wanted to spend a few moments to be just talking about how this is going to continue. So we've already talked about the first phase of the integration, which is pretty much you know, the easy button, as we call it, getting you know, the ability to get stuff out and get stuff in really, really easy. But well, the second piece is how do we continue to build that and make the, the integration deeper? And, and Mike, I'm going to let you talk to this next slide, if, if that's okay. Hopefully, it will come across in a second. Showing on my screen, but it's not showing on the uh, display just there yet. Have you got it? Okay. Yep, thanks. Uh, this is a screenshot of Exec Export. This is one of the management tool options uh, that we have at MSAB. It is a bulk export tool, and it can run either as the graphical user interface you see here or as a background service, but it's popular with a lot of our customers in terms of automating the solution you've just seen presented here mainly by Tom in Examine. So for those customers who know already in advance that they're going to want to integrate directly and take XRY files and put them into Nuix, um, Exec Export is being worked on as we speak. And this quarter, there will be a new update to Exec Export with the same Nuix uh, integration and export functionality. So stand by for that, because that's coming in the next set of releases. But that basically will run as a service in the background and automatically collect any XRY files that drop in a certain file location and pass them into MSAB Nuix file format to be ingested straight away. Excellent. I mean, I think some of, our, some of our bigger customers who pretty much industrialize the process, I think that's really good news. And uh, I know yeah. a few customers who will be uh, quite excited by the fact that this is going to come to uh, to them soon, really, Mike. So thank you for that. Yeah, exactly. We're uh, we're putting out the first export format in Examine for checking and make sure every customer is happy with that, and then that will be transferred into the industrialized version through Exec Export in the next couple of months. Brilliant. Now, Again, my screen seems a little bit behind here, but hopefully now it's moved on to continuous improvements. And Tom, uh, this is where I hand back to you. Yeah, yeah, your screen has moved on, so you're fine there. Uh, I just want to quickly answer a question that's been, or a couple of questions that have come in. Um, just specifically around my demo, um, I didn't mention it, but I was using version, uh, the latest stable version of Workstation, which is 8.4.2. Uh, and 8.4.0 of Investigate. Just, uh, I, there's a couple of people that have asked that, so I just wanted to, to mention that now. Um, so just uh, now, I just want to talk a little bit about the um, what we've done and what we're continuing to do to improve mobile support uh, within Nuix. Um, obviously, um, this is our kind of first uh, big release going forward with MSAB, um, but there will be continued work um, that we're doing. Um, we're looking at that um, continuing your workflow into Nuix. So things like the content recognition, which um, you can do as, as an option within XRY. And that will um, uh, basically identify images um, if, if they contain things like knives, guns, that kind of thing. That automatically gets flagged, gets flagged within um, uh, within the XRY file. Um, that is exported out right now, but Nuix um, displays it, but it doesn't do anything smart with it. So Nuix has its own deep learning capabilities, um, which uh, we have some additional functionality uh, that we can do, uh, but we don't uh, currently apply the same logic to the uh, MSAB stuff. So that's something we're working on. Uh, in the same respect with the dehash, uh, which is a, a, an image uh, hashing algorithm that MSAB used, uh, Nuix uses photo DNA. Um, so we really want to get the dehash value in using the same functionality that we present for photo DNA. So just finding similar images and things like that will be made available for the dehash values. 
Uh, and then finally, the, the kiosk extraction details and other details that um, are not necessarily um, contained within the export files at the moment. We're working again with MSAB to, to maybe um, export out some of the more relevant uh, items, potentially like a, a workflow setting that's been applied or a case type that's been applied to an extraction. If we can take that out and uh, follow it through into NUIX, then we can apply some more logic into NUIX to, again, just kind of streamline your workflow. So that's some of the things we're working on. There's, there's lots more uh, going on in the background. Um, something that we've been working on collectively, not just uh, for MSAB, but for any mobile data is, is normalization. A um, few versions back, we added in the ability to uh, represent the device information of a device that's been exported. Um, and that gets, uh, a file gets created called device information, and it contains normalized fields with uh, values like IMEI, entry numbers, uh, SIM serials, uh, things like that that you just want to see and uh, collectively and, and gather information um, when you just start your investigation. We've also done the same kind of thing with communication data, which is uh, across all of NUIX communication data, not just um, mobile data, but we normalize some of the fields like the two, the from field, CCC, communication date, uh, communication status as well. And again, uh, with phone numbers, uh, we've also done some work on removing the formatting from those and, and reducing those down really to their localized number. So searching across data becomes easier. Um, looking forward to uh, stuff we're working on in the short term. Um, we're looking at the application source. Again, this is from uh, multiple mobile tools, not just MSAB, but um, by normalizing the application source, we're able to give you some uh, more advanced search filters. So for example, if you want everything that's come from WhatsApp, not just chat, maybe you want the contacts, any files, things like that. Um, by normalizing that application source, we'll be able to quickly um, apply some filters or do some searches on, on that app and just return everything related to it. Um, and then the, the kind of long-term goal here is our, our graph support. So we, um, we're adding in support for a graph database. Um, this will sit alongside our, um, our standard uh, database. Um, it doesn't replace anything, it just sits alongside it. Um, and that gives us the ability to um, do advanced relational questions. So how data is related. Uh, and one of the benefits of this is we'll be able to apply some advanced normalization and also deduplication of the data uh, within the graph database while the original item data is uh, still intact uh, within our standard data stores. Uh, finally, just, uh, just on our user experience, I touched a little bit on the uh, out-of-the-box experience. It was one of our, um, one of the bits of feedback we do get from our users that are mainly working with mobile that it's a little bit complicated to use um, investigate or workstation out of the box. Um, NUIX as a tool is designed for lots of different scenarios. It's designed for lots of different data, lots of different users. So if we toned our UI to, to one specific type of user, um, you kind of alienate the other one. So what, what we've done instead is make it very customizable. Um, so what we, we're working towards and we've already started implementing is some out of the box functionality to make mobile investigations simpler. Um, things like search filters and automatically applying metadata profiles to standard mobile types. Um, but we are looking to expand that beyond just mobile data. Um, and then just a couple of other things we've been working on. So again, I touched on these in the demo, but the conversation view um, has been uh, introduced for a few versions now. We're continuing to work on it. We're getting a lot of good feedback from, from our users on, on ways we can improve it and um, things they'd like to see. And we're, we're listening to everyone that we can and trying to um, add those features in as well. So each, each version of Investigate should hopefully see some improvements to things like the co uh, conversation view and the Investigate connections. Okay, sorry, I know I'm, uh, I'm going on a bit and we're running a little bit over. Uh, we've got a few questions uh, from the audience. So I'll hand back over to Paul. Um, thank you, Tom. Perfect Simon. So we do actually have some questions. And I'm, as Comper, I guess I'm gonna take the uh, the pleasure of reading the question, but asking one of you two to perhaps respond to it. So one of the questions we've, we've been asked is, and, and to Tom, do we have any guidance or a fact sheet yet um, that talks about the recommended processing settings for incorporating the MSAB file into NUIX? Because you briefly spoke about avoiding duplicate messages when we do the decoding. Yeah, so um, we don't, it's, something, it's, a, it's a great suggestion actually. I mean, it's something I've, um, tried to uh, 
raise awareness of internally within NUIC. So um, if you're in contact with support or an SC uh, who's in charge of your account, then I'm sure they'll be able to um, explain some of the, the rationale behind the settings there. Or, you know, I, I'm happy to as well. Um, we can certainly look at um, putting together some documentation around that um, and just explain that in a little bit more detail, yeah. Thanks, Tom. Um, uh, Mike, is the test data we, we've we been using part of this demo, is it something that we can share with users, um, our customers, our, our people wanting to do their own testing? I, I'm, I'm <laughs> feeling maybe, maybe not so much, but yeah. Yeah, I'm fearful of GDPR and all that it possesses because we've, we've we've been told off by some lawyers that even if we create data locally in our lab, uh, the GPS coordinates can give away the identity and location. So, um, I, I think we could take questions individually, and if if customers individually need some test data, I'd be sure we can share something privately. But I couldn't do it in a public forum. Excellent. That was going to be my answer too. I mean, just just as background, I mean, I think we we've, we've all over the years created our own test data, and I think it, it's useful that. You know, some of this test data is perhaps um, you know, maybe a few years out of date, but uh, you know, as you say, if people want to contact you directly or contact us directly, we'll, we'll see where we can help with that. But we do need to be very cautious of, you say, Mike, of GDPR and how that might uh, get us all in, into trouble, basically. Um, so thank you for that one. Um, one question is, how does this apply to the current kiosk workflows that some labs have in place? Uh, is there scope for this to be part of the process, particularly automation between the kiosk extraction and investigator and web review? Um, I'll, yeah, I'll kind of uh, go at that, really, yeah, unless you want to take it, Mike. Yeah, I mean, it, that's a great um, question. I mean, uh, the uh, MSAB kiosk has a, a workflow in it, and that absolutely could be automated. Uh, that would traditionally be done with... Um, a review on the kiosk and then passed out, and that's really what the exec export service will come on stream for in a couple of weeks months to do. So yeah, we'd be able to do it that way. Uh, but in Exam and Express, they possibly could also do it manually. So yeah, that that would be a viable option. That one. I think as well, just to, if I just extend that, really. I mean, what we've really tried to is make it simpler. So if there is already a workflow in place, as you say, Mike, what we really do is reducing the number of steps, reducing the output, the number of files that are created. So hopefully, yes, it should allow that autom automation or industrialization to be even more, uh, more, more, more important, I guess, really. Um, yeah. We have a really, a really long question, which I'm just going to quickly see if I can answer or not. Um, okay, we've done that one, Marcus. Um, a question around um, ISO accreditation. Um, how, how does this fit within the ISO accreditation of 17025? Mike, one for you. <laughs> Gee, thanks. I said 17025 in the remaining two minutes of honor. Um, <laughs> the last two minutes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the workflow and the processes around it and the uh, the XRY file help sort of show what's happened along with the log file. The actual transmission of data, I think we saw in that in Paul's uh, demo, uh, sorry, in Tom's demo, was that there was a log file along with the MSAB UX file, so you can track that. Uh, and files can be hashed and encrypted to show that the data has not been altered in any way, but fundamentally, uh, sadly, with ISO 1795, users have to test it themselves at the moment until we can find a better solution. Excellent. And uh, just, sorry, Mike, I've talked to you, I think. Uh, there's one more question here. I saw if an investigator adds tags to an MSF 1795 file in UX Investigate, can this file with additional tags be re imported back into UX think? Examine? Good question. Uh, the answer is no. Uh, we'd never envisage a scenario where people would want to take it back out from UX and bring it back into examine, but it doesn't mean it's not possible. If there's a demand for that, then of course we'd be willing to do it the other way around. Um, but I yeah, mean, that is initial... yeah, it's a great yeah. question, I think, yeah. And, and I mean, a question for me really is, you know, what's, what's next? I mean, that, that question perhaps addresses that really. I mean, obviously, you know, we, we've already put a lot of effort into what we think needs to be in the export and we, we've taken the view as we said on this on this on this webinar that the, the tags will come in but and as Tom's touched on there's other stuff as well but you know the contact data is on the screen if anybody's got any any requests any anything they'd like to see you know, either in the extraction from MSAB or anything that we should do within Linux as a technology then you know please please feel free to let us know on, on the on the two uh, addresses um 
our, our email addresses can also be shared. So if anybody wants to speak to us directly, you can, you can contact myself, paul.slater at newix.com. And Mike, happy to give you your email address, mate? Yeah, sure. It's mike, M-I-K-E, dot Dickinson, D-I-C-K-I-N-S-O-N, at msab.com. Thank you. And finally, Tom, because you do all the hard work, just want to pass your email address across. You have volunteered it. Yeah, yeah, no problems. Uh, just, it's just tom.anderson at newix.com. Excellent. Well, thank you ever so much for everybody taking an hour out of your day for joining us today. Um, as I said, the, the contact information is on the screen. Please feel free to reach out to uh, either ourselves at Newix or our good colleagues and friends over at NSAB, and we'll do our best to help you. Um, we didn't get to answer all the questions. Um, we'll, we will take, we'll take those away, and if anybody wants us com to contact us directly, about any questions or anything that they didn't want to put into the chat, please feel free to do so. As Mike said, um, this new feature is available in Examine version 5, which is out today, we believe. And the features yep. we've shown outside are available in the latest uh, version of Newix, which is 8.4.2, I think Tom said. So again, thank you ever so much from me. Um, it's been a pleasure spending an hour with you. Um, Mike, any, any last words? No, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate the opportunity to work with you. Thank you. And Tom? And no, thank you, everyone. Uh, and, and congratulations, Mike, on the release, by the way. Excellent, yeah. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Thanks very much for joining us, everybody. Have a good afternoon. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone.